Chapter 29 is all about solid state electronics, which sounds really, really, really boring, but it's actually not that bad. Solid state electronics, in a nutshell, is understanding the basic building blocks of what goes into making circuit boards, which pretty much are the backbone for all the technology that we use today. It sounds kind of complicated, but it's not really that bad if you just think of it as Legos. You have your basic small pieces that you use to make more complex pieces, or like different parts of a set. And once you've completed building all the parts of the set, you assemble those parts together to make the complete set. We're going to start with the smallest LEGO pieces first. There are three main categories of these, which are conductors, insulators, and semiconductors. And each of these three categories all behave in different manners, and to really understand why that is, we would have to look at their band theory diagrams. And band theory diagrams are essentially a method of showing a solid electrical property using visuals. And to actually be able to carry electricity, electrons have to possess enough energy to essentially jump the gap between the two layers in the diagram. If you look at the diagram for conductors, the gap is pretty much non-existent, and this allows electrons to flow freely through them. And insulators, however, the gap is rather large, so that would mean that it would require a lot of energy for electrons to be able to clear that jump. And somewhere in between the two, uh, there are semiconductors. And semiconductors, the gap is pretty small, so electrons really only require a little nudge to get across, and there are actually two categories of semiconductors. Substances that are semiconductors naturally and are considered pure semiconductors are called intrinsic semiconductors. And some examples of those are like silicon or germanium. And even though they have a lesser gap than insulators, they're still not efficient enough to make anything of practical use. The second category of semiconductors are extrinsic or doped semiconductors. They're created by introducing semiconductors to dopants, which are substances that boost the overall effectiveness of semiconductors. There are actually two types of extrinsic semiconductors as well. These two categories are n-type and p-type semiconductors. An n-type semiconductor is a semiconductor that is exposed to an electron donor, such as arsenic, which creates an excess of electrons that want to move two holes. However, a p-type semiconductor is a semiconductor that has been exposed to an electron acceptor, which creates an excess of holes that want to move to electrons. The P and N type semiconductors are the basic building blocks that we use to assemble the larger pieces of our LEGO set. Um, two examples of larger pieces would be diodes and transistors, and I could go super in depth on how diodes and transistors work, but I really don't want this video to be 20 minutes long. So basically, diodes are a sandwich of P and N semiconductors that only allow current to flow one way and have a zone in the middle that lacks charge carriers called the depletion layer, and transistors are devices made of a combination of PNP or NPN semiconductors that are capable of amplifying current and converting electricity from alternating current to direct current. The last piece in our LIGO analogy would be the complete set, which would be a microchip, and a microchip is an arrangement of billions of diodes, transistors, resistors, and conductors that are arranged in logic gates to perform tasks. That about wraps it up. Uh, solid state electronics is nothing more than playing with Legos. Really, really, really small Legos that carry electricity and can only be made through complex chemical procedures that require pure crystalline materials and have billions of pieces in a single set. So, yeah, Legos. <laughs>